Let's go to London and speak to Chris Doyle, the Director of the Council of Arab-British Understanding. It's Sunday, so I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us. Chris, let me just read you some quotes from Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, who has been speaking in the past few minutes. Mounting international pressure will not stop us from achieving the goals of our war against Hamas. Uh, he's criticised international allies. He says they have a short memory regarding the Hamas attack in October. We will operate in Rafah. It will take a few weeks, and it will happen. And finally, Israel will operate in Rafah and will evacuate the civilian population from battle zones. Well, that's pretty clear, isn't it? He's been actually very clear from the outset. I think that it is other people who have not been prepared to believe what he has said. He's always said that he wanted total victory, that he would go into Rafah and invade it. And I think that he actually is hell-bent on doing exactly that. And the international community has not mustered uh, you know, the political will and the courage to push back in a way that's going to be effective. It's all very well to make speeches in Washington or issue pro forma press releases. But unless there are serious actions to deter the Israeli leadership, Netanyahu is going to go forward. The reason is, and it differs from, for example, 2014, when it was the last Israeli invasion, ground invasion of Gaza, is that Netanyahu himself cannot afford an end to this crisis, at least until the polls change in his favor. He knows he is bitterly aware that the moment there is a ceasefire for more than a few days, all his opponents are circling, public opinion is against him, and he'll probably be kicked out of office. And once he is out of office, He's into the courts. He's facing the possibility of jail time. So he's actually desperate to continue this crisis. I don't think that he in any way is really serious about getting that ceasefire, despite the presence of Israeli negotiators in Cairo, going to Doha and all of that. I think that Netanyahu himself needs a crisis. How serious, Chris, are the disagreements within the Israeli war cabinet? We know that Benny Gantz has been on an unofficial trip recently to the United States and the UK, and he is pushing the prime minister to at least consider some of the other options here in terms of possibly trying to find a way towards peace. We have Yoav Gallant, the defense secretary, after the war cabinet's meeting on Saturday was canceled, calling a meeting of his own security advisors. Will that kind of division be enough to make a difference to Netanyahu's decision making? Or is it the war cabinet thinking right now we can't act too much against our leader? I don't think it will make much difference to Netanyahu's thinking. And that those opponents there have to be careful because whilst there is a massive revulsion against Netanyahu, the man, the leader in Israel, that they don't trust him. They don't believe that he is doing things in the interests of the nation. The military action remains popular, that actually the Hamas, in their view, needs to be defeated, eradicated. That's the sort of language of so many Israeli politicians. The issue, in part, is over the hostages, that many Israelis don't believe that Netanyahu is concerned enough about their welfare to try to get some sort of pause to get them out. He's more interested in prosecuting the next stage of the war to go into Rafah, where I remind you there are one and a half million Palestinians stuck there right up against the border with Egypt in dire conditions. For Netanyahu, he doesn't really see that obstacle. They're talking now about creating humanitarian islands in the middle of the Gaza Strip to try and accommodate uh, Palestinian civilians. So I think it's a very tricky point for the likes of Benny Gantz, Yoav Gallant, who are not happy with Netanyahu, to be too outspoken in opposition to him. They don't want to be portrayed by Netanyahu as somehow undermining this national effort in a mo moment of emergency. And that's where the ceasefire comes in, because at that moment, if there is some degree of a calm for Israelis, at least, is the moment that they can move. They can say, right, now is the time for the change of leader. They're not going to do it in the middle of a military operation. I want to ask you about that possible ceasefire and about what might be the critical element of any potential agreement. 
does it seem to you as if the decision making between the two sides on when a permanent ceasefire should begin is the sticking point? Because Hamas's proposals are that the rest, the final few hostages and the bodies of those who have died while being held in Gaza will only be returned after that decision on a permanent ceasefire has been reached. You have put your finger on it. I believe it is all about that word permanent because the Israeli leadership, for the reasons I've just outlined, Netanyahu wants a temporary pause. He doesn't want it to be too long. He will, if he gets that, he'll probably escalate elsewhere to keep the crisis going on. And we've seen increased levels of confrontation and crisis within the West Bank. Hamas, of course, want a permanent end. They don't want to give up the hostages only to make it easier for the Israeli military to hit them really hard in Rafah because they will no longer have Israeli and foreign nationals there who they might kill. So for Hamas, it needs an agreement guaranteed internationally that this is going to be permanent and that will be much easier for them then to try to claim somehow that they have politically achieved something. But I think there is that gap between the two. There are, of course, arguments as to how many Palestinian detainees and prisoners should be released as part of this. And Hamas have slightly lowered uh, their demands on that front. It's probably not quite enough, but it is certainly closer for what the sort of Israeli government might be able to agree to. But I think it goes back to that issue. Is this a permanent end to this chapter of the conflict between Israel and Hamas? And I think that's something that Netanyahu is very unlikely to agree to. Chris Doyle, you know how much we always appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed.